What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video we're going to be going over how to set up OBS for streaming. This is going to be something that all of you can do whether you're an OBS expert or you just installed OBS and have no idea what you're doing. So we're going to be going over all the settings, how to input your stream keys, how to connect whatever account you're going to be streaming on, whether it's Twitch, Kick, YouTube. Um, it's going to be really simple. I'm going to make this so that anyone can understand it. And before we get started, if you're looking for banners, alerts, logos, emotes, anything you want to take your stream to the next level, let's give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is your one-stop shop for fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Kick, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, emotes, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about these overlays is that they are completely modular, so if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you could change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. And don't forget, use code HAMMER at checkout for an additional 50% off your order. Now, back to the video. All right, guys, so we're here on OBS. I just opened up my OBS. Mine is set up with like my Twitch activity feed here, my stream info, doc, all of this stuff. Yours is probably gonna look pretty blank. You're not gonna have any of this stuff around the sides if you just started up OBS for the first time. So. The goal of today's video is to get your settings fine-tuned so that your stream looks fantastic. So ignore all of this stuff and come down to the bottom right-hand section here, which is going to be settings. We're going to click on that, and this is where the magic happens. So in our first tab up top here, in the general tab, there's nothing here that's really going to affect your stream. The only thing I want to talk to you guys about here is the source alignment snapping option. You're going to figure this out a little bit later on when we're editing our scenes and sources in another video. But for right now, I want you guys to enable this and set your snap sensitivity to anywhere from 5 to 10. I have mine set to 9.0. Um, so yeah, whatever you, you uh, want to put that as, that's completely up to you. This is going to just help us align our images or our sources or whatever is in our scene. It's going to help us snap them into place so that everything looks nice and even. Moving on to the next tab over here, we're going to go to appearance. This again doesn't affect your streams quality or anything. This is just your OBS appearance. I'm using the Yami theme and the style is default. If you like the way mine looks, you can copy that. If not, you could play around with all of your own themes there. So head on over to the left hand side here. We're going to click on stream and this is where we start to input those streaming settings. So if you're streaming on Twitch, YouTube, Kick, whatever it may be, that's where you're going to select up here where your service is. So I'm streaming on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash hammerdance. There's a link in the description if you guys want to follow me on there. I stream every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So let's say you're streaming on Twitch. We have Twitch selected and right here you can see it says disconnect account and that's because my account is connected. You actually will have a button that says connect account. You're going to click that and then log into your Twitch account and boom, it's linked to your Twitch. You don't have to manually import your stream key or any of that stuff. So then moving on down to the advanced options down at the bottom, you want to check this box that says ignore streaming service setting recommendations. And the reason for this is because Twitch caps your bitrate at 6K, right? 6,000 bitrate, which is pretty low for like high movement games. If you're streaming at 1080p, 60 FPS, you want a little bit higher than that. And there's a trick that I'm going to show you guys, but for now, check that box that says ignore streaming service setting recommendations. That will allow us to bypass that 6K maximum bitrate limit that Twitch implements for all of its streamers that are not partnered. So moving on to the next tab, we have the output tab here. And this, this is where it could get a little tricky if you don't really know what you're doing. So the first thing I want you guys to do is up at the top under output mode, click this and change it to advanced. Mine is grayed out right now. I can't select it uh, because we are recording, but it might be on simple. Just make sure that that's set to advanced. And under the streaming tab right here, this is where we're going to start putting in all of those really important settings. This is like probably number one most important tab, so pay attention here. Under streaming settings, we have um, audio track, audio encoder, Twitch VOD track, video encoder, and rescale output. 
So starting with number one, audio track, you're most likely going to have this set to one unless you're doing something crazy. And in that aspect of, you know, messing with your audio tracks, I don't think anyone who's watching this video on how to set up OBS will need more than one there. Um, for your audio encoder, you can pretty much leave it as FF, MPEG, AAC, or whatever your default is. And Twitch VOD track. Now, this is really, really important. Twitch has a feature that allows it to have a separate track of audio for VODs that are saved. So this will technically allow you to play copyrighted music on your stream, but then when the VOD is saved to Twitch, that music is gone. It's just that number one audio track of your voice and the game sounds or whatever. So if you're playing that audio on a separate track, you can actually do that on your stream and not get copyright strikes or anything like that. I do have a video on that on my channel. I'll link it in the description here uh, to explain that a little bit more in depth for you guys. But just for the purposes of setting up your OBS for the first time, you could leave that unchecked. For your video encoder, if you are using an NVIDIA GPU, I suggest using the NVIDIA NVENC H.264 encoder. And if you're using an AMD GPU, use the AMD counterpart. You don't want to use X264 here because that's going to use your CPU to do the video encoding. Um, and what people have seen, including myself, is that if you're using your CPU, which is X264, to do the encoding, um, even if you have a really, really high-end CPU, a lot of games nowadays are very CPU intensive, so you will be dropping frames in your games. Not something you want to do, so use your GPU's encoder, which for me is the NVIDIA NVENC H.264, and if you have an AMD card, use the AMD equivalent. For rescaling output, this would be used if you were, let's say, playing in, you know, 1080, uh, uh, 60 FPS, or let's say 2K, and you wanted to rescale that output down to 1080, if you are gaming in 2K, you can use this option right here. I have it disabled because I play in 1080, 60 FPS and I stream in 1080, 60 FPS. Moving on down to the encoder settings. Sorry, I'm trying to catch my breath here. I'm trying to talk fast so that this video isn't super long. Uh, under encoder settings, you want to set the rate control to CBR. Your bit rate, you're going to set it to 8K. Do not even set it to 8001. Don't go over 8K at all. 8K is the sweet spot that will allow you, even if you're not partnered or an affiliate, it's going to give you that crystal clear quality. And remember earlier, we checked that box that ignores that 6K bitrate limit for Twitch. This is where you want to put that 8K bitrate in. Do not go anything over 8K. If you go over 8K, it will actually ax your stream's quality and bring it down to like half. It's terrible. 8K is the sweet spot. Make sure you put that in there. Keyframe interval, two seconds. Preset, I have it on the slowest for the best quality. If your PC seems to be struggling or you're dropping frames, you could always lower this by one until you hit the sweet spot. For me, it is P7 on the slowest. Tuning, you want to set this to high quality. Multi-pass mode, I have it set to two passes, full resolution. Again, you could set this to quarter resolution if you're struggling or losing FPS, but always start high and then dial it back to get to where you want to be. Profile, set this to high. Look ahead, unchecked. Cycle visual tuning, we have that checked. GPU, we have it set to zero. And max B frames, set to two. Under the audio tab here, this is where you're going to set up your audio. If you're just playing games with you know, just a standard gaming headset and microphone, that's where you're going to select your desktop audio is going to be your headphones and your mic is going to be your headphone microphone. Um, if you have anything else, like I'm using a Go XLR, everything is mixed down into my broadcast stream mix. Um, so that is why I have one thing here. This is all of my audio in that stream mix. It's my microphone, my game sounds, all of that stuff is down there. And then for desktop audio, I have it set to music, uh, which again is that you know, that Twitch VOD track thing I was telling you about before. So yours probably will not look like that. But a safe bet here is if you really don't know and you're just using a headset and a microphone, you could set desktop audio to default and set mic to default and it should work just fine as long as that's what you're using. Um, for anything else in here, nothing crazy that will affect your stream. Uh, you can do some push to talk options down there with hotkeys and things like that. Next important tab here we want to go over to is the video tab. Your base canvas resolution is going to be what you're gaming at, right? Like I told you guys before, I'm gaming in 1920 by 1080 at 60 FPS. Well, my monitor is uh, 320 uh, hertz, I think. Um, but obviously, we're not streaming past 60 FPS, right? So base canvas resolution for me is 1920 by 1080. And I'm streaming my output scale resolution. This is what's going to Twitch or to Kick or to YouTube. Set this to 1920 by 1080 as well, unless you want to downscale it to like 720 or you're, you know, if you're gaming in 2K, your base canvas resolution is going to be your 2K resolution and then output scale resolution will be what goes to Twitch. You want to stick to 1080, 720, 
things of that nature. And then if you're downscaling, like from 2K to, you know, 1080 or 4K to 1080, you could use a downscale filter. Lanxos is the top filter. It'll put a nice filter over it and look at, make it, you know, look nice and crispy. And then common FPS values, set this to 60 FPS. If you're trying to stream in 60 FPS, you can always drop this down a little bit, maybe to 30 if you are struggling to run these settings. And that's really it. We have the hotkeys on the left side. You can pretty much bind hotkeys for any function within OBS, which is really, really nice. Um, so you could use that feature. I don't really use that. I do use a stream deck and a loop deck. Um, accessibility, you can, you know, obviously change colors of certain things here. And under the advanced tab, in the general section, you want to make sure the process priority for OBS is set to normal. Do not raise this anymore. If you change this to above normal or high, what you're going to do is allocate more of your PC's resources to OBS and start losing frames in whatever game you are playing. In this tab, you could also add an extra stream delay. You can enable the automatically reconnect option in case you do lose internet or something like that. But that's really it. After you do that, your stream will be looking so nice. So I hope this video helped you guys out, helped you get on your feet if you just installed OBS, or maybe you just didn't really know what some of these settings meant. You know, you could always copy my settings and then tweak them to your PC. This should help you all get a nice, crystal clear looking stream. Uh, I've been working with this stuff for years and years now, fine tuning all my settings. So I just wanna share that with you guys. If I did help you out, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video and definitely come hang out with me on Twitch. Link in the description below, twitch.tv slash hammerdance. We stream Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I want you all to keep those hammers up and I'll see you next time.